Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Let me get my camera adjusted there. Hello. Welcome to what is today? Day five of my 12 days of Christmas. I hope you guys are having a good week. We finally have some sun today, which usually we have lots of sun, but we've had some very dreary weather this la the last few weeks, actually. Hi, guys. So glad to see you guys jumping on. So today is day five. And as we get um, nearer to the end of this holiday catalog, things are selling out. And um, the projects I have planned for Friday using the Handmade Wishes Bundle, I noticed it's on low inventory today, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, if it's still available in the morning, I think maybe I will do those projects tomorrow and then do Window Wishes on Friday. Um, so like I said, this is... Uh, <laughs> um to be determined you know it's it's fluid it's a it's a definitely not set in stone so we'll see um just a reminder that everything in this catalog that's on the last chance list which is about 90 percent of the catalog is while supplies last um and lots of things have already sold out um i noticed the snowman magic bundle is gone today the spruced up bundle is gone um what else was gone there was something else i noticed um can't remember but anyway um make sure you've gotten all those things on your list check it out still some really really great deals on the last chance list hello okay let's get started so today is day five jingle 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 is the set that we're using today um, I want to remind you that if you use this host code between actually yesterday and Monday at midnight, um, next week I will send you three of this week's projects. I don't know which three, but it'll be three from the projects that we do from yesterday to Monday. So days four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, those orders need to be in by Monday at midnight. Make sure you use that host code. I just mailed off, um, this last week's Facebook Live Make It Takes, um, and they were the Scotty Projects. So um, literally my mail lady was here like 10 minutes ago picking those up. This is what they look like. Um, you will need the stamps and dies of whatever I'm featuring, um, and I don't do any stamping. That's a, that's a big no-no in the Stampin' Up! world, but I do send you a little thank you tag, um, usually using the products that I feature. All right, so let's just real quick, if you haven't caught the previous day's projects, here's here are the projects that we've done. We did Christmas banners last Thursday, and then we did the Scotty on Friday, and then we did Sweet Candy Canes on Monday, and then yesterday, and I only have one of the cards. I don't know where the other one went. Um, yesterday I did the, uh, Regal Reindeer. Turned out really beautiful. So if you haven't caught those, make sure you go back, back and watch recordings. Today we're going to make a card and a box. I try to do a card and a treat each day. Sometimes a little hard. That window wishes was hard to come up with a treat <laughs> using that, that one. Um, every day I have a giveaway also. Um, my blog is Pink Buckaroo. Dot com. The link will be, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, it will be the very first line in the YouTube um, description. Uh, you click over there, scroll down under the last photo, there will be a link. And you click that link, you go over and ask, answer a question and give me your mailing address only for the prize. I'm not going to send you anything unless you're the winner. And then every day I'm picking a winner at random to win a bundle. So for Wednesday's prize, Deb, no, no, Monday's prize, Debbie Green, you are the winner. Beautiful shapes and hello beautiful bundle. For yesterday's winner, it is Nicole Anderson, framed florets bundle. 
And then today's prize is the He's All That bundle. Let's see what tomorrow, tomorrow's prize, what do I have over here? How about sweet candy canes will be the prize for tomorrow. So you'll have to come back to my blog tomorrow to enter to win for this one. All right, so if you wanna win the He's All That bundle, these dies are so good. Uh, make sure you find that link on today's blog post. Scroll down. And uh, just, you know, every day I ask a question like, what's your favorite Christmas song? What's your favorite Christmas carol, cookie? All You know, just silly questions. And then your mailing address and your email address. It's really very easy. All right, well, let's get started. So Jingle 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 is a fun word set has these big words that are really your focal point. I love when the words can be the focal point. Um, we're gonna use them in two different ways. Each of the words has a fill-in image like that I like to call it. There's the outline and then the fill-in. So for this project, jingle, 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 we're going to just use the outline, okay? We're gonna do some embossing. And I am using craft, our six by six craft paper and some real red paper, real red cardstock. And we're gonna use um, Kraft white ink and white embossing powder. All right, this is the embossing buddy and it helps to remove any static cling that you might have on your paper that's gonna um, hold on to the little powder granules that you don't want. And it comes with this tray and the little reverse tweezers, as well as a little skinny paintbrush that is used to wipe away any stray granules you might have. All right, so jingle, jingle, jingle. We're gonna stamp it four times. I did it three originally, and it just, I felt like it needed something else. So we're gonna do four. I added that fourth one. They don't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of, you know, eyeballing it, if you will. And then we'll use this, this little plate here, this little tray. Hello, good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me. And if you have done a really good job with your embossing buddy, all those little granules will only stick where they're supposed to stick. And we're also gonna stamp the little Santa hat. Like that. And let's see if we can get some of this on here like that. Very good. All right, I'm gonna bring over my heat tool. We're gonna use the heat tool twice today because we're also gonna use that snowfall puff paint. Let me move this so I don't make a mess. Have you guys used the Snowfall Puff Paint? It is really, really cool. Okay, now I've moved my table, so of course my um, heat tool is out of reach. There we go. All right, now the Stampin' Up! Heat Tool is really good because it has two settings, and the highest setting is still, I feel like it's not hot enough to really hurt you too bad. <laughs> The old one that I have that I still use, it gets so hot that it will melt your fingerprints off your finger. And uh, nobody wants that. <laughs> so this, the heat tool that we have is pretty good because it, it's hot enough to do what it's supposed to do, which is, I guess, melt the powder into the ink. I don't really know the right term. It's kind of like a science, science experiment. It turns the powder into a glossy finish and it's kind of a raised finish if you've never done embossing um so it's hot enough to do that but it won't um i don't think i mean it's hot you want to keep your fingers away from it but it's not as hot as that old one that old one i have is probably 25 years old so you know way back in the day i know that this is hot enough to melt things it's not supposed to I had I was doing a project sitting on top of a stamp case silly silly me and I um when I when I pulled the paper up it had melted <laughs> at the center of the plastic 
Okay, so before I turn that off, I'm gonna take my, I'm leaving it on because it stays hot. Well, let's turn it off because it might overheat. This is the Snowfall Accent Puff Paint. And you know what? It looks like I did not finish that one right there. And this stuff is really liquidy when it comes out. So I like to just squeeze a little bit and kind of use the tip of it to move into all the spaces that I want it to fill in. All right? And then we're going to turn the heat tool on, on it. And then we're really going to see a science experiment. It's like those... I always say it's like those grow grow crystals. Do you remember those from the 80s? Those, I mean, they may still have them where you would grow a little crystal. That's what it reminds me of. So as soon as it, and it takes longer to activate than the um, embossing powder. But as soon as it does, there we go. You're going to start to see it bubble up. And it's a fine line between keeping it there long enough and scorching your paper. So you have to be careful, kind of have to play around with it. Luckily, when you use colored cardstock, you don't really have to worry too much about that. I'm going to add a little bit more right here because it looks like it kind of separated. Ooh, now it's going to be real puffy. I hope the Snowfall Puff Paint hasn't sold out yet, has it? I, ha I didn't check that. All right, I wonder if my heat tool will stay on long enough for me to do a little bit more over here. You think? Let's see. I don't know, this is quite a long time. If you had white paper, it might scorch it. I don't know, maybe not. But it takes a while to get to the right temperature. It was still there this morning? Good. Okay, there we go. I think I'm gonna leave it. Oh, see, this is one of those that I can't walk away from. I just wanna keep making it puffier and puffier and puffier, but I'm gonna stop. Nope. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna stop. Okay, so can you guys see? The texture is really cool. Okay, so we've got that. Now, you could color these guys in with Stampin' Blends, um, or you can do what I'm gonna do and use a watercolor pencil. And, you know, either way is fine. You're gonna get two different looks. I like coloring on craft paper. I think it gives kind of a, I mean, it gives a completely different look than coloring on white cardstock. We're gonna use our blender pen, which I don't use very often to smooth all this ink around. It's kind of like a water painter without all the crazy water. It has a solvent in it that works in the same way. All right, so real red and white is what I'm gonna use. gonna take me a minute so you guys tell me what you've been up to this week let's see what reminders do I have to tell you about paper pumpkin deadline is coming up if you want to subscribe it's a cute little gift card paper pumpkin um, today what is today the seventh last day for club create subscriptions I am almost done with next month's project. I'm waiting on one thing to come from Amazon so that I can design my last project. The milkshake, we're gonna be doing the share a milkshake next month from the new catalogs, very cute. Okay, so now nobody's telling me. It looks like toasted marshmallow if you leave it on there too long. Yes, Carla, she's right. If you leave your, um, if you leave your heat tool on too long, it does scorch that and it is toasted. You're absolutely right. So you have to be real careful. <laughs> it's a fine line, that, that heat tool. Um, I wonder if you turn it to the lower setting, if it would get hot enough to, to, to activate it. I should do an experiment. All right, so see, I'm taking my blender pen 
and it looks just like our stamp and write markers. See the tip of it? And then you take like on white paper and you just run it off into all the color. I have to use this cardstock. <laughs> well, I'll just grab another piece. You just run it until all the color is out of there. And then you can use it on the next color, okay? Which is what we're gonna do now. Die cut 250 mini curve cake. Oh my gosh, that is a lot. Now you're making 250 twine bows. You know, that's a lot. 250 of anything is a whole lot. I always say my Club Create, that's about where we're at with Club Create. And I know how to count, but counting 250 over and over again is hard and it's not very accurate. <laughs> You can lose count really easily with when you get up to like a 250 kind of number. That is a whole lot. What else are you guys up to? Your schnauzer is eating everything like, but oh no, Sandy. Is, I can't remember. She's a girl, right? Is she a year old yet? You know, Pepper never really chewed on anything. She was, she was pretty good about that. But you know, you just don't know. You know, when you get a dog, if they're gonna be a chewer, if they're gonna be a biter, you just don't know. And that whole first year is like crazy. I have a friend who, they just adopted a puppy and it's eating everything in the backyard, like the trampoline, like pulling off chunks of the trampoline and chunks of the slide. <laughs> That's a real chewer right there. All right, let's see. I'm gonna to try to get some of that color off in the places that it went over. Now, you can take a paper towel and wipe off that in um, any embossed, like if you get color over the embossed, uh, what am I trying to say? If you get color on raised embossing, you just take a paper towel and you wipe it off. Now, before I move on, I'm gonna do something else. This is something I have never, ever done before. When I was gonna make this card, let's see, how long of a piece do we need? I wanted black twine and I was out of black twine. So I took my Stampin' Blend and I've done this to ribbon, but never to twine. My black Stampin' Blend and I'm coloring it black. Now you have to do it a few times to get it all the way black. And it totally works. Have you guys colored ribbon or twine before? I didn't think twine would, would color, but it totally does. So you just keep running it through and this will kind of flare out your your end your brush tip a little bit but you guys know I don't use my brush tips very often so I'm not too worried about it plus I don't use basic black dark hardly ever okay so let it sit there and dry now we have black linen thread all right let's put this we're going to put this piece on a basic black mat okay and then we're gonna put it on a real red card base. Let's see, we have a nine month old Cocker Spaniel and we swear he is really part goat. <laughs> I think some of them are. You're right, Carla, Pepper is a twine lover. When I said she doesn't chew, I was thinking about that. And it's not that she wants to chew it, she just wants to unravel it, which is bizarre. I don't know. It's very strange. Okay, so now these don't have dies. So we're just gonna use our scissors, our paper snips, and we're gonna cut them out. And I find that when things are embossed, it makes it easier. I don't know, it kind of gives you like a little edge to, to cut upon. Mac is watching me today, I'm not sure why. He has been watching me all day, just standing at my door watching. We went over to the new house yesterday and they are 
done with the frame, we're waiting for the, what they call the, the wrap, the outside part to arrive. It's supposed to arrive today. But the dirt guys, as they call them, were coming to kind of clear out more of the lot. Our lot was so dense and thick with cedars and oaks that you could barely even walk to the back. You can't see, we walked to the back yesterday. We still can't see the house from the back of the lot. But one thing that we were thinking about is that the back is raised quite a bit, 12 feet on one side. And we're not sure how this old guy, Mac, is going to be able to navigate the stairs in the backyard. So I don't know, it's kind of a, <laughs> kind of an issue. May have to build him a ramp. All right, so I'm putting the little jingle, jingle, jingle like that hat on those two. And then that piece of white cardstock that I used, let's get a new piece. And we're gonna stamp the sentiment, which I didn't pull out. You know, I was trying my very best not to forget anything today. We want the one that says all the way. Jingle, 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 jingle all the way. All right, so you're gonna stamp it in memento black. And I'm gonna do it right, let's see, I wanna do it right on the edge and I can't see because of this. I'm gonna do it right on the edge because I want it to be straight except for around the Y. All right, so I'm gonna take my scissors. Now let's cut all this off. And I'm gonna just cut in straight and then go around very carefully the Y and then up straight like that. Okay, and we'll just put that right there. And then we'll tie our twine and we're done. So the watercolor pencils are really fun. Um, you use them as a, as a regular pencil, and then, you know, you can leave it like that, or you can um, take a blender pen, like I did, or a watercolor, um, or a, a, a water painter, and then it just kind of spreads it out and looks more washed, more filled in. All right, so, that black ink made the twine even stiffer than it is already, and it ties really well. And then snip and snip, and there you go. Project number one. Now, if you don't like the craft, you could totally do that on white cardstock, don't you think? White would be just as cute. All right, now our next project, Ugh, I don't have anywhere to set this. I'm working on Club Create today, sorting kits, and it's everywhere. All right. Um, so Nina, yes, we're leaving trees for sure. Um, we're leaving the oaks, getting rid of the cedars. Um, Nancy, I'll be posting photos, yes, as we get, um, as we make progress, um, for sure. Especially of my craft space, which I know you guys want to see. All right, we've got a box. Let's move this out of the way. And inside the box is the little Elf on the Shelf cake bites. Have you guys seen these? Um, I've seen them at Walmart. That's where I got them. Um, but I found them on Amazon too. Of course, they're more expensive on Amazon. Um, they look like this. All right, and of course, I thought with the word believe, that just reminded me of like Santa and the elves. So I'm using a gnome instead of an elf. All right. Okay, let's make our box first. Let me get all my pieces. You're gonna need, let's see what we have. Thick basic white. And where are my notes? Thick basic white that is Wait a minute. Nope, we're gonna do the bottom. Let's do the bottom first. Did I cut these backwards? I think I did. Bottom, well, yeah, I think I did them backwards. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's all right. We're gonna do, 
white on the bottom, red on the top. That's fine. <laughs> okay, this is the bottom part. So it is eight and three fourths by six and a fourth. And we're gonna score it at one and three fourths all the way around. Okay, and then the top, you're gonna want to get about eight or nine post-it notes. You're gonna create a shim so that your top is a little bit thicker or a little bit more you know, wide and long so that it slides down a little bit easier. Um, put that on the left side of your Simply Scored and then go around and score at one inch on all four sides. Okay. I was thinking last year we did a box that I showed you how to make a box of any size. We probably need to do that again this year, huh? So that you guys, I can remind you how we did it. Um, it's very easy to make your own box. It really is. You just have to, you know, use your grid paper. Now, why did I cut that right? Boy, I sure hope I measured everything right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I, just my paper isn't right. So I used the sweetest Christmas paper on the original box, that candy cane paper that's so cute, but sold out. So I'm gonna use this paper. And I can't remember the name. What's the name of this paper, you guys? It came, It was from last year and it carried over and it's really pretty. I'm putting this on here now and then we're gonna assemble the lid. All right, so burnish all your lines. Somebody's gonna tell us what the name of it is. And I am gonna cut the uh, score lines on the short end and I'm gonna cut off the corners. Okay, also here and here. Painted Christmas, thank you. Hi, Judy. Cut off the corners like that. All right, so now I'll use some Tombow and my clothespins. I have tortilla soup in the crock pot. And let me tell you, it's torture. I've told you guys that before, right? And y'all have to agree with me. If you're home all day and you have something in the crock pot and you have to smell it all day, it just makes me wanna eat all day. And then by the time dinner's here, I'm sick of it. <laughs> uh, okay, so I folded those into the sides, used chombo and some clothespins to hold it together. Now we'll do the bottom. Chicken tortilla soup for dinner tonight, even though it's gonna be 80 degrees today. 80 degrees and 100% humidity. It's disgusting. Totally disgusting. I don't like it at all. All right, so the bottom, we're just gonna do in the exact same manner. Cut the score lines on the short side. Snip, snip, snip. Snip, snip, snip. A little bit of glue. Boop, boop, boop. I hope this box goes together correctly. I made it one time about two weeks ago, scribbled down the measurements, and now we're going for it. Let's hope and pray that it works. And look at my hands, my goodness, what have I been doing all day? I think that's just from twine, And but what's the green? Oh, I had a, a um, an ink refill leak on my desk overnight, I guess, because there was this big puddle of green and some of my Stampin' Blends were sitting in it. And so now I cleaned it up, but now every time I pull out my Stampin' Blends, there's a little bit of green <laughs> on them. Ugh. Okay, let's set that aside and let's make this little part right here. So this embossing folder, Whimsical Woodland, is it's not carrying over, which is so strange to me because it's so cute. Is it still available? Les, have you looked today? I, I did not see this, but 
I wasn't specifically looking for it. I don't know. All right. So we're going to stamp, anyway, piece of vellum embossed with a woodland, whimsical woodland embossing folder. Now we're going to stamp this. And I think, I, I think we'll try it and we'll see. I, and I sometimes, I don't know, I go back and forth. We're, we're going to do the, the solid believe first, and then we'll do the outline second. Okay, so use your Stamparatus. Mine is filthy. And we are going to stamp it in real red. Okay. And then we're going to take the outline and we're going to line it up. Just don't even try to eyeball it, guys. You're going to you're going to need your Stamparatus for this. Okay, and then Memento Black. It doesn't say retiring in the ordering portal. Am I wrong? I thought it was on the last, I thought it was on the last chance list. Maybe it's one of those, do we have any of those things that are carrying over to the next holiday catalog like we have before? I didn't do a very good job. Let's try it again. Let's try the opposite way this time. Okay, let's try the outline. Whoa, paper's not low enough. It's, it is still available. Hmm, did I imagine that? Oh my gosh, what is happening? Okay, now I'm gonna take this I don't want to make my hands any dirtier than they already are. Let's clean this real good. And take this, dry, and set it on. And let's see if we can do a better job of lining them up this way than we did the first time. Okay. Oh, so much better. See, as compared to that. All right, so lesson learned, do the outline first. At least for me, if I did better that way. All right, bringing back the trimmer. Oh, it's 60% off. You found it, Judy. For what? You're kidding me. This is $4? Wow. They must have an overabundance supply because that is super cheap. Oh, my goodness. Where did my, my blade popped off? Let's see if I can get it back on. All right. Boop. And then, boop. You have to make that noise when you do it. All right, so just cut it so that you have, you know, a rectangle. All right, let's put all of this together. Will the box fit? Place your bets now. Will the top fit onto the bottom? Who thinks it will? Who thinks it will? Okay, little cake goes inside. And the moment of truth, a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I'm giving a bow right now. It worked. <laughs> Phew, you just never know around here. Okay, now, this is vellum, and it's on a busy piece of pattern paper, so you are not going to see that adhesive through there, okay? We've got our little elf, our little gnome, who I think he looks like an elf. And we're gonna, I'm just gonna use glue. Yeah, you guys are laughing, I know. But that is that's that is the reality around here. That is the reality. I will write measurements down and half the time what I write down is not right. I guess that's the brain of an artist, huh? So on the original, I used the polka dot paper from The Sweetest Christmas, but again, sold out. 
That was really good paper. All right, real red hat. This right here, I wanted to make him like have a Santa hat. So this is a flower from the teacup dies. Any little flower will work. And you know what I just remembered? I always forget Wink of Stella. I put Wink of Stella on that last project on all the letters and I forgot. The reason I thought about that, a little petal pink nose, is because I wanted to get my Wink of Stella and do that up here. Of course, it's wet. Stay. Wink of Stella is just, should go on everything. I'm, I'm convinced these days it just needs, especially when you guys send me cards, you put Wing of Stella on everything that is, and it makes it just look so gorgeous. And I think, why don't I remember to do that? All right, so our little guy right there, couple of dimensionals. Hi, Andy, from Washington. We're having Washington weather down here in South Texas. Everybody keeps saying, what is with this Seattle weather? It's very soupy. I don't know, does, does all of Washington have soupy weather like Seattle is known for? I don't know, I'm ignorant about that. I've only been to Washington State one time and it was Seattle. Actually, I take that back two times because I was flew through there, spent the night there this summer on our way to Hawaii. Ugh, bad memories. Flight cancellation in Seattle, not fun. This is the Glittered Organdy Ribbon. It is in the annual catalog, so we don't have to worry about it yet. And I'm gonna just put that right behind our little gnome. And there we have it. That's a really easy box. And that's one of those that you can do the, how I showed you last year, using your grid paper to make your box. We'll do that, hopefully I, we can fit that in next week. Okay. That is it for today, 36 minutes. I try to keep it 30 minutes, I can't do it. Um, remember, if you want make and takes this week, same host code as last week. Um, I will not be live tomorrow. I, it will be pre-recorded and it, I don't know what it's gonna be <laughs> because things are selling out. Um, we'll see. Um, you know, and it makes me mad because I spent so much time designing projects and then the stuff, to, retires or sells out and I can't use it. <sighs> That's what I get for working ahead. Anyways, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Um, but look for tomorrow's post two o'clock. Both today and tomorrow's post have giveaways. Scroll down under the last photo, click the link and answer the questions to be entered to win one of those bundles. All right, you guys have a great afternoon and I will be back live on Friday at two o'clock. Have a great day. Bye.